Hi folks, Mr. Tessalonian back here again. I want to take you through how to build your own simple laser from uh, easy to find materials that you could get at any hardware store. Now you could do some things to this which I'll describe here in a moment to make a better laser what, than what I'm showing you. But this will actually produce an actual laser beam. It uh, should be invisible to the eye. The actual beam itself should be invisible to the eye since it is a CO2 powered laser and we're dealing with an IR or infrared laser beam here. So what we're going to do here is just kind of walk you through exactly how I built this laser in front of you. I'm going to take it all apart. I'm right at the stage where everything needs to be finalized. Uh, some of the welds between the stainless is done and the glue put on there to actually attach our outer metal tubes to our glass tube here in the center. Uh, so before I do that, I want to just take each one of these pieces apart for you while I still can and show you how I built this. So you can put together your own laser out of cheap materials at home. So let's start over here at this side. First of all, you can see the completed laser all the way down the track here. We've got two mirror holders here, which we still got to build the mirrors. Uh, I'm going to show you that in another episode. Uh, we've got a mirror holder here, and we've got a mirror holder over here at the far end. That allows us to put our mirrors in there and be able to adjust our mirrors, because adjusting the mirrors is crucial to getting a good LASIK beam inside of this. This tube that you see right here is actually our vacuum tube. So we're going to be able to hook up a vacuum compressor up to this laser and pull a uh, probably 20 tor vacuum all the way through the system. Over here on the other side what you see is a high voltage input. This little metal rod I'm touching right there. On this side that's a stainless rod going in there and I have that electrically insulated. I'm going to take this all apart and show you closer. Uh, so that's electrically insulated so we can actually fire basically a plasma charge down the glass cylinder and that plasma basically takes these atoms in the CO2 gas and the heliums that are going to be in there and it brings them from a low state of energy or almost at rest for an atomic rest and shoots them up to a higher state of energy and on their path back down what happens in a laser is let's say some of the photons being created in the laser are traveling in a straight line here some of them will be and as that photon interacts with a high energy atom it produces a photon out of that atom. As the atom steps down in energy, it produces a photon traveling in the same direction as the impacting photon. So as they go through the system, the photons, they interact with those CO2 molecules, the hydrogen molecules, and they actually the, they drop it down from its state of excitement that it's brought up to by the plasma charge being discharged between our anode and our cathode all the way down the tube. All right, over here on the other side, we basically have the same exact thing, just built a little bit differently. Over here at the tip of my finger, you can see that's our other high voltage input. That's our brass input over there. So we've got our anode and our cathode set up here. We have a gas line hooked up into this copper T that we've got there. And I'm, like I said, I'll pull this all apart so you can see it better. And that's going to be our actual CO2 helium mix and a little bit of nitrogen being flooded into our tube. And as it gets flooded in, the vacuum being pulled on the other side will actually draw the gas all the way through the reaction chamber, allowing it to interact with all the plasma charge inside of the tube. Uh, over here at the end, we have a brass bushing here, just like on the other side, which I'll show you. I've drilled and tapped that brass bushing to allow for screws here through a washer plate on the other side to be able to go in there. And we've got a sandwich medium, this white layer you see in between. That's actually going to hold the mirrors in there, and that looks like this. So if I hold one of those out there, it's just a uh, softer, you can see you can flex it, neoprene washer uh, that we can use, or a uh, foam kind of material plastic washer that we can use to actually install the mirror in. That way we can adjust our mirrors, uh, which is going to be real crucial to making sure that we have a good laser. We're going to use a little red pen laser to do that later on, which I'll show you how to adjust your tubes with the laser and how to adjust the mirrors with the laser. So let's go ahead now, let me pull this thing apart for you, set all the pieces in front. And then I'll zoom in on each one of the pieces, take them apart for you so you can kind of see exactly how each one of them is built. So let's start this out just to show you here. All you have to do to get these pieces apart is you just lift the system up just like that. You can pull that out. So here's one of our pieces here. This is one of the back tube sections. You can see the threaded screws coming out of there with the nuts on them so we can clamp it down on the mirrors, be able to adjust that mirror in there. So let me set that down for a moment. You can see the high voltage. You can see the gas here. All right, so now we're over on the other side, and I want to go ahead and just lift that up again. This one's a little more difficult to get out of there, so I'm going to have to turn it. There we go. All right, so here's the other side of it. This has the same basic things. We have two washers with screws sandwiched between that. We have a brass bushing here, so you have the half-inch drive brass bushing, which I'll show you up close. We have our... Uh, 
vacuum hook up here and we've got our brass anode or cathode here on this one side. We've got a dielectric material that's actually going to block, it's actually an insulative material that's going to block the charge from being able to go from here if it actually jumps onto the inner tube and touch the outer glass here. So let me set that down and I'll show you the rest of this and then we'll break each one of these pieces down individually, zoomed in so you can see what they're made out of. You notice over here on this side I've got a hole drilled and all the way over I have another hole drilled. Let me go ahead now and show you how I mounted the glass tube. You can see here it's just some PVC pieces. We pull one of those off and bring it up to the camera for you. I used a hole saw through a section of PVC. I've also used a hole saw to drill out the wooden plug that's in the bottom and you can see these screws. Turn that one over, you can see the head of this screw here. There actually I pre-drilled some holes all the way through it, set those two screws in there to hold the wooden plug. Down here in the base I've drilled a hole saw hole so each one of these plugs you can see my straight line. So I drew a straight line, made sure each one of the centerings of my uh, drills were right so I could drill through the hole saw hole and that allows that plug to drop in there. That gives me some uh, mounting capability into this block. Once I'm done I'll be able to set a set screw in through the side, either one of the sides there and actually mount that in a steady position once I set the lasers up to do the alignment which I'm really close to doing but that requires gluing so I wanted to show you how to do this before we got there. Uh, the other side is just the same thing and here in the center we have a neon or a fluorescent light tube and what I've done here is drilled out the ends so it was the right size to be able to fit my half inch stainless steel tubing with my insulator around the end of it there. You can see the insulator around the end of the tubing. Uh, to be able to put that all the way down inside of each one of those. To get the white coating out, I busted up a couple full rolls of staples into individual staples. Kind of rubbed them back and forth until they busted up. Dropped them in there with some water, shook it up until it was fully clean. Make sure to wear gloves when you do that because you don't want that white material on you and dispose of it properly. So there you go, that's a simple way here. If I take all the pieces off, you can see all the holes drilled all the way down our line here. So I just drew a line in the piece of plywood there, drilled the holes where I knew I was going to need it for the spanning. And that allows each one of the pieces, even our PVC piece here on the bottom, that it still drops right into that hole. and allows us for a good mounting system and a holding system for this. and allows us to align it properly and then kind of glue and screw everything down so it holds its position really, really well. It doesn't stress on any of our glue points, and that's the nice thing about it. So let me go ahead now. We'll set up for the uh, zoomed-in shots on each one of these pieces, and I'll take them apart and show you how they're made. All right, folks, so here we are looking at our two end pieces of our laser here in the shot. I'm going to go ahead and just start pulling these apart and just show you what materials I used to build them, kind of describe it a little bit for you. First of all, we got one of our back laser pieces here. This will actually be the spot that we call the a less than 100% mirror. We're going to have probably a 65 or 67% mirror there, maybe up to 70, depends on what kind of gases I put in this. But anyways, that's how that looks. You just have two compression washers sitting there. They actually hold the mirror in between just like that, and that allows for us to adjust these mirrors. Let me take the top piece off, and you can see it's just a washer. And what I've done is drilled and tapped for three screw holes through there so those screws are actually running through threads in that washer. That allows us to have one nice mounting plate there. Uh, the rest of this here, let me take this whole section off the back. This is actually a brass bushing with a half inch drive shaft in the center of it. It's a nut, You can get these at any hardware store. The back side of this is another one of these washers the same size as this one. And what I've done here is marked it out and put a uh, uh, centering there and used a hole saw to drill out large enough so that that washer could sit over the top or the back side of that bushing there allowing me to have a uh, compression plate to mount our mirrors in between. So pretty easy pieces here just a brass bushing, couple washers, some screws for that piece there. Let me set those aside. Uh, the rest of this here is pretty easy. Let me go ahead and remove this. Okay so this is just a piece of stainless steel tubing as you can see there. Nice little chunk of tubing. We can hook a gas line up to that pretty easily. Um, at the very end here, if I hold that up there, you'll see there's a little bit of a crest in the center, uh, a little bit of a concave effect there. And that was so when I push it into the pipe, it doesn't create a little lip right here because of the arc angle of drilling and all that. That kind of reduces the lip sticking out inside of the pipe. Kind of get it, there you go, so you can see that. All right, so let's pull that out of there. And you'll notice here the stand is easy, just a piece of PVC pipe. Uh, I've drilled a half inch hole through it here. That's easy to build. Uh, the rest of this here is just another piece of stainless steel tubing, as you can tell here. I've drilled the hole in there, just the right size for our stem here, to, for our gas input. So you can stick that stem 
down in there and it's a very tight fit you actually have to hammer it in just a little bit and this is all going to get welded the stainless is going to get welded together here um, before I put this all together and at the other side here what you see this little stem sticking out is our brass uh, basically our cathode or anode side right here I have to look at it um, but that's going in and I've got an electrical tape wrapped around that where it goes down into our stainless steel tubing here and it's all glued in with a high pressure glue, something that's really strong and clear, doesn't have any metallic flake in it like an epoxy. That makes sure that the contact, the inside edge of this inside the tube, has no electrical connection with the rest of the electrical tube here, or the uh, metal tube. And you can see here, very little impedance inside of there from that piece of uh, brass rod. It's not going to affect our tube very much. I got a little something right there I should pull out. I didn't see that there. We'll have to clean up that piece of tube. You can see it in the shot there. Uh, so that's pretty easy to put together. So that's just going to be our high voltage input right here. And around the outside edge of this, I've got a uh, insulative material, just a piece of clear tubing that I smashed down over that so that it can give me a nice insulator between this and the end of our glass tube, which I'll show you. So pretty easy to put together. Let me go ahead and set that all back into place one more time for you, just so you can see. So we slide the tube through there, just like that. Align that hole out the top. You can go ahead and press in our, our pipe there, so that way it sticks out, ready to go. We're going to go ahead and put our brass, well, we got to put the rear washer on. So we take the rear washer, put over the brass bushing. Actually, one side works better than the other, so let's go around that way. So that just sits there now, goes right onto that stainless pipe perfectly. And then we've got our front washer here, and we put that all together, and basically right there is all you're going to need to make a laser function. That's a nice little tube set up. It's made out of nice pieces there, and once you weld the stainless tubing into the larger stainless tubing here, it'll hold together well, and I can actually braze the brass onto this. Hopefully the braze will hold. I might have to work with something else there, but we'll see. Maybe a JB Weld will work just fine for that. So I'm going to go ahead and align all this with the laser. We'll glue everything together here in just a moment. Just want to show you how quick and easy that really is to build. Uh, the other one's built just slightly different than that one. Let me go ahead and start taking this one apart. You can see here I've got one stud permanently mounted, one threaded stud here at the tip of my finger, permanently mounted out of the brass. That hole got overshot, so I ended up putting a little larger screw through there and, and using it as a stud in reverse. So let me go ahead and pull that off of there. You can see here what I have is just a circular plate with three holes in it. It actually has a threaded inside collar in there. You can see the threads in the light. It's got this elongated collar off the back. That should be good for threading in uh, our crystal, if this is going to be our crystal side, the actual output of it if it's not the 100% mirror side. Um, here you can actually see one of our neoprene washers. This would be difficult for me to get off of there. So let me grab another one of them right here. This will actually be where we mount our mirror. And you can actually see it's not a neoprene, but it's actually a flexible material. It has a little bend and shift to it. So we'll actually mount the mirror in the center of this ring and be able to adjust our mirrors just slightly with an elongated or oblonged holes, these three holes that you see going through there, we'll oblong those just slightly if we need to. That way we can adjust the mirror, do a little pitch because it's compressible slightly. We can actually adjust the pitch by uh, in increasing the torque down on one of our bolts. So we'll be able to change and direct our mirror here. Let me go ahead and pull that piece off. And this is all glued together here, so you can actually see some of the, the glue down in there holding this all together. So I smeared the entire tube section that went inside the brass bushing with that glue pushed it together. Uh, I've drilled and s tapped all the rest of the holes down in the brass bushing ridge inside of that facial ridge of the brass bushing there. You can see it overlaps. Some of those holes went out into the brass bushing here just a little bit, but that's no problem. And that allows us to compress our mirror once again in between uh, those two plates right here. So that smashes all together and gives us our other mirror compression plate here. Um, so the rest of this is pretty simple here. I've just got pull that apart for you all right once again a piece of PVC pipe pretty easy a uh, piece of stainless tubing here with our actual stainless uh, high voltage input here once again with the electrical tape insulating it between the hole and the stainless pipe everything's glued into place we have that insulator tubing around the stainless pipe there cameras having a hard time focusing you can see very low impedance there from the actual high voltage input just now just that end part here is just a copper T I've got a high pressure air valve or hookup actually screwed down into that T. I'm going to take that out and actually sweat all this together so it makes a really good seal on there. Uh, so that's pretty easy to do. Let me quickly put that one all back together for you once again so you can actually see just how easy it really is. 
you just stick your copper piece. One of these holes in the PVC is larger on one side since the copper is expanded in size than the other side. So that allows for your half inch to go in this side. Take me just a second here to get the alignment. Let's turn one the opposite direction. So there we go. We've got our high voltage. We've got our, uh, our air pump part or our compressor hook up there. Uh, so the next part of this is just going to be a simple take our brass bushing stainless pipe and our uh, mirror clamp. Stick it in the end. Sweater glue all these pieces together and there we go. There's the rear chamber for our uh, laser. All this is very easy to build. So I'm going to go ahead now start gluing things. Uh, when I get to the point where once the tubes are all glued together and everything's sealed, I'm, before I glue this tube to the glass, I'm actually going to align a laser down all the way down this tube and make sure my tubing and the glass and everything are perfectly in line. So that way the laser beam's running right down the center of the tubing and it's not, you know, obscured just a little bit and angle. Uh, and then once I got that aligned, I'm going to make sure it's mounted that way, hard mount that way, and then glue the end of this, the insulator coupler, coupler there, into the glass, and we'll finalize all that with the glue, and we should be ready to go. And I'll show you that when I get there.